What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today is a sad day because I'm doing the final review of my 2017 Ford F-150 Raptor. Uh, this has been a fantastic truck to me, but as you guys already know, I have already purchased a 2021 Ford Bronco Badlands, doing an epic build on that. We're gonna be documenting that coming very soon, but the wife won't let me keep this and the Broncos. <laughs> I could, I could not go with the Bronco. So I've actually traded this vehicle in. And uh, by the way, if you want an opportunity to purchase this vehicle, at the time I'm making this video, the vehicle is still available. I'll have it linked down below. Uh, if that link is still live, then the vehicle is still available and you're more than welcome to purchase it. But it is a first come first serve uh, because I don't expect this thing to last long because there's very, very few miles on this one. And we will talk about that coming up in this video. So what I'm gonna do in today's video is kind of give you just a, a walk around of the vehicle itself, kind of recap everything that I've done to the vehicle, go over the options, go over the miles, and uh, tell you some of the things I've absolutely loved about the vehicle and some of the things that I've not so much loved about the vehicle. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with the front. This is a 2017 Ford F-150 Raptor. It's an 802A equipment group. So it's the top trim level and it's got all the options on it. Uh, but this vehicle actually started out life as an SCA Performance Raptor. So uh, what they originally did back in 2017 before there were suspension components available for lift kits and things like that, they basically were just slapping bumpers front and the rear on there. They slap, you know, slap some wheels and tires on it and they just called that kind of their package. Originally, this vehicle was purchased brand new by a good customer of ours. He came back, traded the vehicle in, and then when I got a hold of it, I did some modifications to it. So the very first thing that I did is I swapped out the suspension system. So this one has got a two and a half inch ready lift suspension system underneath it. So the reason that I liked that version instead of doing like a BDS four inch lift or a, a rough country four inch lift, something like that is because a lot of the times the Raptors are known for jumping them. Although I've never really even took this thing off road just because work has been so crazy. Really, I bought this thing back in July of 2020 and so we've been working all the way through a pandemic and my work schedule has been so hectic so crazy i've got a bunch of young kids that i've really not had time to properly off-road this thing um, but don't worry we're going to make up for lost time in this new bronco because as you guys probably know i'm going to be going to the bronco super celebration west in colorado uh, me and josh are both going to do that by the way josh is the guy holding the camera uh, but we're going to be going to Colorado and we're going to actually be properly trail riding and doing rock crawling and all that kind of stuff in the new Broncos. We're going to make up for lost time, but nonetheless, this is what you've got. A two and a half inch ready lift suspension system. And that actually clears the way for 37 by 1250 on a 20 inch wheel. It's a Nitto Ridge Grappler. And uh, I, I think these tires have got about 10,000 miles on them because I bought the truck when it had about 14,000 miles on it. And uh, I think the truck now has about 26,000 miles on it. So I guess my math is a little bit wrong there, but you kind of get the idea. They got plenty of tread left on them. One thing that I love is these wheels. These are my favorite wheels on the planet, even still to this day. These are the Fuel Rebel 6 wheels. They're the anthracite gray. And in my opinion, they are the best looking wheel, especially when you mat it up or made it up to this particular color. This is not carbonized gray because now it's called carbonized gray. But back then this was, what was this color called? Magnetic. magnetic. <laughs> Thank you, jo Josh reminded me. This is now, uh, it was called magnetic. Now it's called carbonized gray. Uh, but the color matches up literally almost perfectly. And I think it looks fantastic. Now there is one flaw on the whole truck. I bought it with it already on there. And that's going to be this little dent right here. Um, I think there was a tree limb that actually had fell down. But uh, when I bought the truck, I was like, you know what? I found this like right before I bought it. And I was like, oh man, that's going to bother me. And I said, you know what? If anybody says anything to me about it or notices it, I'll go ahead and just get it done. I think that there was a body shop quote for like 1500 bucks to get it fixed. And nobody even noticed it. I guess because the truck is so tall or people just don't look up that high. I don't know why, but most people just have not even noticed it. But other than that, the truck's been flawless. Let's come back around here, take a look at what's going on here. Um, the ready lift two and a half inch leveling kit, when I started adding all the stuff to the back of the truck, it, the, the lift kit, it was kind of doing the Carolina squad a little bit. So what we did is we did um, a slightly larger block in the rear. So that way the truck fits and sits almost perfectly level. Uh, especially with the added weight of the, the the back of the truck. Now I will tell you though that I am taking the Rotopax fuel cell and then I'm also taking on the other side you've got these uh, traction boards those are definitely coming with me uh, but the truck actually is for sale with 
the uh, Yakima uh, large tent and the, the whole Yakima rack. So this is going to be, there's two different racks available for the Ford F-150. Now what I like about this truck is, first off, you've got your power release tailgate uh, with the key or with the button, either one there. Uh, but you've got your Retrax bed cover, which is lockable, and you can slide it all the way forward. And as you can see, you've got full access to your bed. Now, what's going on with this particular rack, there are two different versions of the rack that Yakima makes. And what's nice is it actually works with the bed cover. So most of these racks that you see are not capable with an actual bed cover. This Retrax bed cover is expensive as all get out, to say the least. And then when you put the, the rack on top of that, it gets to be a very expensive setup, but it is the best setup. And that's the reason that I, I went this particular route. Uh, when I say best, Best for me, not necessarily means is best for everybody else. This was my best setup. This was my perfect setup. This was the kind of the very first truck that I said, okay, this is unlimited budget, but I also want to be smart about it. What do I want to do? This is exactly how I wanted it built. Uh, but you've got two different versions. You have the Overhaul HD, which is the taller one. It actually goes up to the roof cap height. This is the outpost system, which is a little bit lower. Um, and the reason that I wanted to do that, Josh, as you step back, you'll be able to see somebody's getting on that motorcycle out there. Somebody getting after it, baby. <laughs> So the reason that I went with this system, the outpost instead of the overhaul, is because it doesn't go all the way up. It stops right here. Why did I want one that didn't go all the way up? Well, first I'm six foot three, because I have to say that in every video, uh, but you don't, I mean, imagine if the tent started here. I'm six foot three and nobody would be able to reach the dadgum tent. So I wanted a rack that was a little bit lower, but I also wanted something that was a little bit better for uh, aerodynamics. And so because this one sits a little bit lower, the whole tent is not above the cap. If I would have gone with uh, the even higher setup, literally the entire tent would be nothing but a gigantic parachute. So now, thankfully with the aerodynamics, you've got half above and half below. Hopefully it, it increases the fuel economy just a little bit. Now, a fun fact, even with the tent and the larger tires, I'm getting better fuel economy in this Raptor than I am in my new Bronco in stock form. <laughs> and this one's got a much larger engine. So that's, I guess that's what happens when you have a very, very, very aggressive gear ratio in that Bronco. So anyways, let's come around here to the driver's side and uh, take a look at the inside. All right, so on the inside, you've got a couple of different things going on. Most of the stuff is gonna remain mainly stock. I'm gonna turn that air conditioner down so you can hear me just a little bit better. Uh, before we go into the actual uh, interior and what's going on here, I do wanna showcase what we've got here. We got a lot of tools, a lot of keys. So obviously you got the key for the vehicle. I've got the spare set of keys in there as well, but you have the Ford factory key, which is really, really cool because it actually operates these locks that are holding everything on in the back. So I've got one of those bolt locks that re-keys the actual Ford key. So that's pretty sweet. You've got your retracts key. You've got your keys for um, the, the uh, hitch, which by the way, the hitch is going with it as well. And then uh, also the key for the tent. So everything on that rack setup is completely locked down and impossible to steal which i think is pretty cool but if you do have those keys that i just mentioned to you you've got a lot of different parts or tools really that will help you get the tent off or to uh, to get everything off so you've got all of these different tools that are located and you've even got some more down in here as well so a lot of different options to take care of and take off and it's really sweet how it's really just a modular setup back there and that's one of my favorite things is just it's kind of like a grown folks lego set back there but anyways um what we've got located in here we've got a set of weather tech floor mats for the front and the rear now i don't know if uh yeah so the the logo is still on this side but on this side the logo has come off from one of the times now what's crazy is th these weather tech floor mats I've actually had them in, this is the third truck that I've had these WeatherTech mats in. So they started out in a 2015 gray truck that I had. They went into the red 2017 XLT that I had for two years. And then this one, which is the 2017 F-150 Raptor. So what's so cool about this particular F-150 Raptor is because it is the 17 model, it is upfitted with the Sync 3 system. So you do have Apple CarPlay, you do have Android Auto, um, it is plugged in. So you do have to plug it in to utilize that but it is nice to have it nonetheless now the other thing that I want to point out to you is um, the fact that when you start this car up there is something that I've put in this truck that you know we don't necessarily recommend it to everybody uh, but I've installed what they call an auto start eliminator 
in this vehicle. So basically what happens is you pop this piece up, you pull the dash out just a little bit, and behind this auto start stop button, there is a dongle that you can plug into it to where every time I get in this truck, it automatically defaults to the off position. So you don't have to tap this button every single time to start the car. That is one of my favorite modifications that I can't necessarily publicly um, uh, recommend on our YouTube channel, but it's something that I did on my personal one and is staying in the truck itself. Uh, the other thing that I did is I just went to Best Buy and literally just bought a uh, dash cam. This thing has been fantastic because um, it, it's got a really, really high resolution. I don't think that it is a 4K display, but I think it's uh, something very close to that. It's more than just a normal 1080p, uh, but as you can see, you can actually rotate and choose how high you want it to be positioned. You can manually force it to record, and I've also got it hardwired wired into the fuse panel in here in the passenger side of the kick panel. So a pretty sweet setup there. Focusing now on the actual dashboard, you can see this vehicle does have 26,196 miles on the odometer as it is right now. Once again, I bought this thing with roughly 14, 15,000 miles. So I didn't get a chance to drive it a whole lot because we've got a lot of different vehicles here at the dealership that I'm constantly test driving or bringing customer vehicles home from the service department and swapping out things and things like that. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty sweet setup. Now looking on the steering wheel just a little bit lower, you're going to find this this vehicle also features adaptive cruise control. So, uh, wait a second, adaptive cruise control, this thing's got the, uh, the those heavy duty front, mod, front bumpers. What happens, well, it's really sweet because SCA Performance, that's one of the things that they always do is when they put those bumpers in there, they relocate that speedometer bracket or the, the radar bracket or the radar sensor up into the grill so that way you maintain that adaptive cruise control and it also has lane keeping system. So a pretty sweet setup and um, yeah, it's just something that's fantastic. You also notice you do have your drive modes here so you can toggle in between the sport mode, weather, you've got the mud and ruts and uh, you can see I, <laughs> I shifted it a little too slow and then Baja mode and then rock crawl. So this was really the OG. This is where the Ford F-150 started picking up those different drive modes in the vehicles this is kind of what's this is the vehicle that kind of started it so a pretty sweet setup there as well now located up here you do have a couple of different auxiliary switches i will tell you that there are two switches located right here these two power the lights in the rear bumper so there's some baja um, excuse me, rigid uh, LED lights in the rear bumper. And these are the two switches that cover those. And uh, no, uh, the rest of these I don't think are wired up for anything, but it is nice to know that you got a little bit of overhead there. Speaking of overhead, you do have an overhead twin panel moonroof uh, with a very nice divider. So most people don't realize when that shade is completely closed that it even has a twin panel moonroof. So it's really, really nice to close it off if you need um, a little bit darkness going on in the vehicle, but it's a pretty sweet setup. Now let's take a look at the back seat. All right, in the rear of the vehicle, you'll notice this thing still needs to go through detail. So I apologize. There were some car seats back here, uh, but we're going to get all of this taken care of before the actual sale happens. But uh, I wanted to get this video made as soon as absolutely possible. But one of the things that I love about the F-150 is the hidden storage compartment. So you fold this down, you do have your jack, you've got the uh, filler system for the uh, capless fuel filler. Um, and uh, word on the street, you can actually kind of reach back in here and store some stuff if you need to. So just a little hidden spot, if you will. But with, you, with that said, you can actually lift this side, lift this side, and you've got plenty of space in the back seat as well. Um, so the, yeah, that's what you're looking at. Now, I will tell you, sorry, we've got some of our equipment I'd probably need to get this out for the video. <laughs> so let's focus on this. But you do have your WeatherTech mat in the rear. Once again, this thing has seen a lot of abuse, but it is nice to see what it has done as far as keeping the carpet clean. So this is a 2017 model with a nearly brand new looking carpet and hadn't even been detailed yet for the backside. So a pretty sweet setup there. Now, in addition to that, you do have, check this out, heated seats in the rear as well. So you've got heated seats, you've got your uh, normal plug here, you have a USB USB-A, USB-A, and then also a household outlet plug, as well as another household outlet plug located up in the front. So the Ford F-150 does a really, really good job of making sure you've got plenty of creature comforts in the back seat as well. All right, so let's take a look underneath the hood of this F-150 Raptor and kind of show you what we've got. So this is the 3.5 high output 
V6 EcoBoost. Now, once again, it still needs to be detailed, so we're going to get all this cleaned up and detailed for you guys. But it is kind of nice to see undetailed, there's no mud on the underside of the vehicle. This thing has not been abused off-road, but it is nice to see, specifically speaking, what you've got as far as the motor is concerned. Once again, I already said it, 3.5 liter V6 EcoBoost has a twin turbo direct injection, and uh, yeah, it makes a ton of horsepower, 450 horsepower, 510 pound-feet of torque. Uh, this is a stock motor. We have not actually um, done anything to the motor, so no Whipple turbocharger upgrades or anything like that, and uh, I think that is absolutely a sweet little setup. This motor makes more than enough power to turn those 37-inch Nitto Ridge Grappler tires, and so yeah, I cannot cannot tell you how much I don't want to sell this truck, but once again, the wife won't let me keep both of them, and uh, what do they say? Happy wife, happy life, right? <laughs> so there you go. That is what we're looking at. This is the goodbye. This is the farewell to my favorite F-150 I've ever owned. And uh, you know, if one of you guys buys this vehicle from uh, from our dealership, I'll be absolutely grateful. But um, even if you guys don't, we just thank you for kind of joining us because if it wasn't for you guys watching our videos and liking and subscribing and just building this community community around us, I would never have the opportunity to buy something like this. And so. Um, as, as cheesy as this is going to sound, I'm eternally grateful for you guys for, um, for everything that you guys have allowed me to do. You've allowed me to play on YouTube for a living, and I just, I'm very, very grateful, and we appreciate you guys, and we love y'all, and um, we just appreciate you joining us. So uh, before I get emotional, let's go ahead and wrap up the video. <laughs> If you haven't already done so, make sure to check me out on Instagram personally, Mitchell S. Watts. I'd love to interact with you guys there. If you do DM me and I DM you back, that is actually me talking. So we look forward to meeting you there. Uh, and if you haven't already done so, make sure you leave a comment down below. And without further ado, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn that button from red to gray. And thank you so much. You guys have a great day. Peace.